I was still sick. And then he's assaulting me while I'm sick. My children, they, are, they were watching. Mm -hmm. natoka kwa bafu. I was naked. Yes, I, I had only a towel, like a chukua, katupa. My kids were seated there watching. You removed, I can assault you removed the towel that you were in. Yes. Hi, Tuko family. My name is Kingori Wangeshi, and I welcome you to this episode of my story. In today's episode, we are going to hear the story of one Catherine Mweni Mwende. She will tell us her tribulations in marriage that she has been for the last 11 years, and we hear what has happened until this point. Welcome. Kwa majina naitua Catherine Mwende Kumu, mimi ni mama watutu wawili. Umekua kwa ndoa miaka mingapi? More than 10 years, because I have a 10 years old son. Yes. Ebu tueleze familia yako wa watoto wako wakona miaka mingapi mingapi? Wakonza wakona miaka kumi, na nafikisha kumi na moja December, mungina wakona miaka sita, ni ma 2017. Yes. Naeza uliza, how did you meet with your husband? Okay, I was in college at Machakos. At my fourth year, I met, I met a man, and we fall in love. Na alikuwa the only son to a single mother. So to me, he was like so lonely. He wanted to move. He wanted to to move fast after school. Although alikuwa maliangu kidogo, yeye alikuwa attachment. Lakini mimi nilikuwa manafunzi shule the fourth year in college. Alafu sasa nikapata mimba my first born. So I didn't have to go back at Ushago because I've been raised by my grandmother mm -hmm. and my grandfather and they are two, they are old. Mm -hmm. So I had to, to go with him. Okay. Upon the Lianza Maisha. Yeah. Lianza Maisha, where did you settle? We first settled at Ongata Rongai mm -hmm. because I guess he got a job there. Mm -hmm. He was working at a certain company in Ongata Rongai. Mm -hmm. Yes, I didn't kaji fungua na tukalea mtoto akafikisha miaka tano. Mm -hmm. Ndiyo, tukahama rongai, tukeenda a place called Dimuru. Akapata kazi pia kubwa. A certain company. Yes. And how can you describe that marriage? Was it smooth? Did it have issues? Okay, at first it was good. Yeah, especially when I had my son, it was good because he had now company since he was just the only child. And his mother was not around. He had gone abroad. So it was just us. Yes. And did you visit each other's families? Did did you know their family, and did they know your family? Yes, he used to take me home. We used to go to Shago at Nyaururu to visit other families. He also had been raised by his grandmother, so we used to go to visit her. She was also old. Napia, he had other relatives. We used to visit them, but visiting our place it was rare. Yeah. Only occasionally when we have maybe functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, you're speaking in past tense. We used yeah. to, we used to. You are no longer together. Or what no, happened? we are no longer together. Mm -hmm. Yes, now in 2022, mm -hmm. uh, I was vying for an MCA mm -hmm. at Limuru. Mm -hmm. And he was, my big, he was my supporter. Yes. And then my sister got sick. My only sister. Mm -hmm. She fell down and then she, it's like she was hit by something. They didn't know. Mm -hmm. And there was no one to take her to the hospital since I'm her only sister. So I had to take care of her. Mm -hmm. And then I had to rush to Makuen because we were at Limuru. Mm -hmm. So when I rushed, I took her to the hospital, mm -hmm. but she was already in coma. Mm -hmm. She was not moving. She was not opening her eyes. I was referred at Makuen General Hospital. When we reached there, she was in coma. So the doctor advised me that she cannot stay in the hospital alone. I stayed there for almost a month. In the hospital? In the hospital, mm -hmm. yes. And she didn't wake up. Actually, she was getting worse day by day. So I just come, maybe weekends, I could come back to Limur and visit my family and go back to Makueni. So after staying in Makueni, I came back. When I came back, I found my husband that is not happy with me again. I, di I didn't know the reason. And he was in Limuru? Yes, he was in Limuru. Mm -hmm. When I came back I, to see my children, I found out that he has brought his mother already. 
in the house. His mother had come back in the year 2019. Mm -hmm. He had been staying back in Ushago at Nyoru. So when I found, I found his mother, I didn't feel good because the house was small and it is something that we had agreed, no bringing relatives, because even my sister, when she got sick before she got into the coma, I didn't bring her in the house. Mm -hmm. And he left. He said that he was going for Kakamega for work. After he left, I just stayed for one day. The second day, I fall sick. Before I come now, Nipate, my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. I had come two weeks earlier. Mm -hmm. When I came two weeks earlier, it is when we had an argument. Because he said that I'm staying in the hospital, I have left the children alone. But to me, I felt like I'm the one who is holding my sister not to go because she was very sick. Mm -hmm. So we had an argument. He was driving a matatu, a van. Mm -hmm. I was seated behind. The argument is, he got so anchored. I don't know why. And then he slapped me and he pushed me against the van. Mm -hmm. I was hit on my right side. So from that day, I've been having headaches. That's why I even left the hospital to come and stay back in the in the house. Mm -hmm. I started experiencing, experiencing headaches, neck pain. Then after that, when I came back, I fall sick the second day after coming. After two weeks now, I fall sick. On the 13th of June, in the morning after preparing the kids to go to school, I started feeling weakness of my left side. Mm -hmm. My hand, my leg, my tongue. I could not talk properly. Mm -hmm. My eye had dropped, my tongue had dropped, and then I was rushed to a nearby clinic. Where we stay, there is a clinic, a company clinic. So I was rushed there. The doctor just looked at me and said, this is stroke. Mm -hmm. And we need to take her immediately to a nearby hospital and to a, an advanced hospital, because if this is stroke. And if we delay, she might die. Oh, no. Because I could not even lift my left arm my left leg mm -hmm. so after there i was taken to the hospital the doctor confirmed that it was stroke but it was just mild it was not that strong mm -hmm. it affected my left side and i got paralyzed i was admitted at the hospital for two weeks mm -hmm. getting medications after the medication i got well i went back home mm -hmm. I, were you able now to lift your hands no mm -hmm. i went home while i was on a wheelchair <laughs> After going to home, I was advised to go for therapies. Mm -hmm. I started therapies week one, week two, and also praying because the doctor told me that I should pray a lot. I was so young to get stroke. Mm -hmm. So I was advised that I should go for therapies mm -hmm. so that my, my left side can get, can be strong. But the doctor promised me that my body is not much affected. Mm -hmm. I can stand up again and walk normally. Yes. So when I was told that, I was told that I was told that I was told that I was exercise. Mm -hmm. So I used all the savings money that I had saved before because I was very hard working. Mm -hmm. I've worked all my life since I got married. So what were you doing? I had a business. Mm -hmm. First I was employed, then after employment I opened a, a shop. I was selling clothes, second hand clothes. Mm -hmm. I had a spa. There was a time back I had a big hotel. Mm -hmm. Yes, before I changed to clothes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, at this time, mm -hmm. uh, was your husband coming to see you in the, hospital, the hospital and working with you uh, that journey? When I was admitted, he used to come in the hospital. But there was also somebody else in the house with the children, mm -hmm. his mother. Mm -hmm. He didn't come, something that pained me a lot. Who did not come? My mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. She didn't come to the hospital because I got sick with her in the, with her in the house. Mm -hmm. She witnessed what happened. I'm admitted for two weeks. It's not far. She did not attend even a single day. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, as a mother, you'll want to, another mother to tell you how the kids are doing but she has never attended my, she has never visited me in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I go home, I found my children that they are almost getting depression. To Kangangana and Kendalena therapy. Mm -hmm. Week one, week two, I was able to walk with a walking, walking stick. Walking stick yes. Mm -hmm. Now I, I left the wheelchair. I continued praying 
friends prayed for me family prayed for me after another two weeks three weeks i also started getting strength i started going without the walking stick mm-hmm. i was doing my therapies at kijabe hospital i was doing thrice a week then gradually nikaanza kupata nguvu mm-hmm. but still when i was limping at least right now I'm, i've started walking thre- straight there was a day we had a quarrel with my husband some confrontation because of women he slapped me again and i near alini assault we ba sana mm-hmm. until i got a fracture again mm-hmm. here uh, alitumia kifaa no he was using his heart is huge mm-hmm. it's very big and then alini push tena kwa bed my bed is a metallic bed mm-hmm. he pushed me again so that day i saw death i was still sick and then he's assaulting me while i'm sick my children they are they were watching Mm-hmm. Nikuwa natoka kwa bafu. I was naked. Yes, I, w- I had only a towel akachukua katupa my kids were seated there watching. Akani assault the bathroom. Remove the towel that you were in. Yes. Akani assault and he told me that he has been waiting for that time for so long. What what time exactly? For him it was around 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. Yes. What is it that he was wa- has been waiting for? To assault me. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he did that in front of your children. Yes. Actually up to date my children remember that they they talk about it and they are young. Mm-hmm. It has really affected them because they went into trauma. I spoke with the teachers so that they can be talking to them. They are healing gradually. So after that assault, I left. I didn't sleep in that house that night because mm-hmm. I thought maybe I'll do something bad because I felt so bad. I couldn't believe it. So after that I called a friend a teacher she's a teacher at where my children go to school mm-hmm. she came for me with a taxi i informed my relatives they said that she will not sleep there because we don't know if this man wants to kill me or what mm-hmm. so i went i spent with my friend she took me to the hospital i was advised to, by the doctors i had to take a p3 i had to report him Mm-hmm. I did it but I didn't have the courage to 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 take him to court. Why? People were ready to help me to take him to court but I didn't have that courage. You know, mm-hmm. he is still the father of my children. I just mm-hmm. forgave him mm-hmm. and I dropped the case. I did have the P3 the OB but well it was in the house. Alichukua kaficha. He maybe maybe he wanted to kill me because he was concentrating on the head and he knew very well that I had an injury which brought the the stroke but and you I, still forgive him i still forgave him and went back into the house i was told by my relatives not to go back there but i remember that my kids are, are there they have suffered when I, i got sick they have never seen their mother being falling down you know sometimes i could shake after the stroke and then i can fall down any time so my children have witnessed all that i didn't want to give them a, another shock so i just got strong and i go i went back there But now that is when he realized that I can go nowhere. Mm-hmm. He started going outside, sleeping outside, shouting at the kids, changing tones, being so furious. I started sharing with my aunt, sister to my mother because I don't have my mother. My mother passed a long time ago when I was young. So I started sharing with my aunt. And my aunt has been providing for me at least transport i go visit her we share we talk she convinced me to get out of that house but i refused until when i went to visit my aunt she told me you are falling again into depression because this year february after the assault i got so bitter i fall into depression i've been taking the antidepressants sleeping pills pressure So when I went, I think it is two months ago. My aunt told me that now you are falling again into under depression because this man has been going out. He doesn't want to be asked where are you coming from. Any communication is becomes a confrontation. And he behaves so arrogantly that he wants to beat me. So I got so scared. So when my aunt told me that you are falling again into depression and your children are the ones suffering. 
by you staying there. So what do you want us to do? Are you going to get out of that house? I told her, I can't get out of that house without my children. I have to get a plan because there is a day we had an argument. And he said that whoever can take those kids in, out of that house, he can kill. He can kill that person. So I was so scared. I've been living with fear. Actually, something that made me not leave that house all that time mm -hmm. is because of the kids and what he said, that he can kill someone if we get the, if we get the kids outside of that house. As in, if we take the kids from him. Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm or comfortable. Or we need to put that below? And no, are you? I'm comfortable. Okay. Thank you. So it's the fear that has been keeping you in that yes, house? Yes, it is the fear. Have and you... I was also desperate because I'm sick. I can't do anything. I'm working with one arm. I'm also limping. Sometimes I'm having a lot of pain because when the muscles are stretching, I experience a lot of pain. I was also scared because he was the one who was taking me to the hospital. So I was wondering if I get out of here, will I ever get medications? But when I came back from my aunt, he chased me away at night and it was raining in my condition. I begged him at the doorstep, please just let me in so that I can see my children. I could hear my children crying in the house. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do that. I stayed there until morning. I seated at the doorstep. It was raining. Limur, it is very cold. I seated there to see if maybe he can open for me, but he didn't. Then at around five, because I knew that the children will wake up and go to school and they'll find me there, I called a friend, the same friend who took me that day that he assaulted me. I explained everything to her and she told me, just come. We meet at the gate so that you can come and have something and at least you take something hot. I went because that friend of mine is a teacher. She told me that you have to go and see your children. If at night you are chased away while your children were watching and you left them crying, you have to go to school and see them. I went to the school that is before they closed the, the, the last week before they closed the school. I saw I talked to the deputy, I saw the kids, I talked to them. I could see that my children were suffering, mentally suffering. Because they were crying. When they saw me, they just cried. Even the deputy was shocked because they, I didn't tell the deputy the reason why I've come to see the children at school. Mm -hmm. But they cried a lot. They were asking me, Mom, are you leaving us? Don't leave us, please. I just told them that today I just come to say hi to you and bring you some snacks, but you go home in the evening to your dad and then I'll come for you. They refused. They said that they will not go. So I stayed with the kids. I was given the permission. Yani will and I behave. Mm -hmm. I was given permission to stay with them until four. So Nilikana wow. Hadi Gioni, Gioni Lipofika, I was able to convince them. Go home, I'm coming. So when they went home, I could not stay without them. I went again to st I was advised by relatives that I should go back to Makweni now. Because I've, I've been chased away. Where can I go? Mm -hmm. I cannot stay at somebody's place when I'm in my condition for long. So I went back to my friend's place. I stayed to wait for the kids to close their school because they were for closing the following day. Nikangoja wakafunga shule then. I was called by the teacher. The daughter, now the young one, mm -hmm. six years old, my daughter. She got sick. She was not bleeding, headache, high fever. The, now the closing day, I was called by the teacher. And since I had no money and I, I couldn't take her to the hospital, I had to call the father again. Please, I'm in the hospital. I've been called by the, by the teacher. Our daughter is sick. And I'm here at the school. What do, you, what do I do? He said, stay there, I'm coming. He came, picked us. We took the girl to the hospital and then we went back home. So you went back to the house? Yes, I to, went back to the house. That, to the, house. Mm -hmm. the same aunt that I've been sharing with her, what I've been going through, she told me, so you told me that your husband goes every Friday and comes back on Sunday. You just stay there quietly, just do the house chores quietly. And then when he goes, we will know what to do. And I thought about it and Conan, it's a nice idea. Because I could not take those kids from that house when he's there. Mm -hmm. He could have killed me, as he said. So I waited. It was on Wednesday. I stayed on Thursday. I washed, I cleaned, I did general, general cleaning in the house. She's just here, she can go nowhere. 
na condition she has no money and you, when you're doing this general cleaning you're still using your one hand yes i use one hand because he withdrew the house girl mm -hmm. after the assault he withdrew the house girl. he became so arrogant and disrespectful he has humiliated me so badly so you know as a woman i cannot stay in a dirty house i have to do what i can so i use only this one hand but the other one is healing nitishinda nikifanya cleaning akakuja jioni akapata nimepika sapa tukaka i was sleeping on the, on my son's bedroom and nilikuwa nimemhamisha akaenda kulala na dada yake hakuongea tukaamka friday tukashinda he came at around 3 akakula and then he told me naenda as usual the way he has been doing then when he left i called my aunt ameenda na atakuja tu sunday obvious as he does my aunt told me now pack pack everything your clothes your children clothes i'm sending you transport i called a friend of mine because i could not pack alone a friend of mine came the lady who has been washing clothes for us she came we packed i was sent money i took taxi and then we left me and my children my children were so happy i couldn't believe it they were so happy actually they were laughing at him atakuja you know they call him atoli he talks like him sometimes mm -hmm. that shouting yeah so we left and that's how i left that house it has been one month so you remember i texted you one month ago yes yes that is when we left to ukambani me and my children my old grandmother is there she's in a wheelchair she also got sick and i didn't know they didn't tell me because i was sick mm -hmm. my grandfather is a blind man so you can imagine the place that i'm taking the kids i'm also adding them burden you want to wana saidiwa lakini pia na mimi nimeenda kuongezea mzigo it depends me a lot because all those years i've been working hard i've been providing what i have to them now i'm the one who is depending on them yes now i'm the one who is depending on them my grandmother needs a lot of medication she has epilepsy my grandfather has blood pressure high blood pressure when i went home my grandfather called them called my husband and told him you chased my granddaughter away at night at a condition so what do you want he said that i will we have to sit down and talk he lied italienda bila kuniambia he's the one who took me to stay the day i left he's the one alinipeleka kwa barabara kwa highway nikachukua eh mara ya kwanza sasa ndio nikuja nifukuze Niali nipeleka stage na akaniweka kwa gari. Uh, during all these things when are happening to or between you and your husband. Uh -huh. Na vile unasema alikuwa furious and outbursts. Mhm. Uh -huh. How why muliza ni nini kinaendelea or he could be going through something? Ataka ngi communication. Actually any communication ni natana kwa confrontation. Mhm. Uh -huh. Na mimi naogopa kinichapa because sometimes he becomes so furious unaona ni kama anataka kunihit again. I was so scared. Mm -hmm. Siko na muuliza. Mm -hmm. Actually there was a time ndio nienda sasa nakuru. The last time ndio nikuja nifukuze. I stayed on my couch for two weeks without moving. Just going to the toilet and back. Why? Do you, you were were you sick? No, I wasn't sick. Mm -hmm. I just stayed there on that couch just thinking, you know, I was I think I was falling under depression because just thinking and crying. I was not eating. Mm -hmm. He's not talking to me. He's just coming from work. Anaenda anaingia kwa bafu anaoga, anaenda jikoni, he prepares whatever he prepares. Wanakula na watoto. He's not talking to me. He's not asking me anything. Anaenda kulala. Asubuhi just wakes up again. Anaenda. Na wewe ukipika hakuwa na kulama namna gani? He eats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my grandfather called him. He said that he, he wants to come with waze. I should also look for Waze so that we can talk. I told my grandfather I'm sure that he will not come because I know him. Apendi hizo confrontation mambo zake zijulikane. Outside actually is very good. Actually watu hata wanasema mimi ndio mbaya because ni yule mtu mwenye uko nje hautaamini lakini kwa nyumba is that monster. Yeah. But you stayed with him for all those years. Yeah, for all those years. He was not a monster before or what happened? Okay, kuna wakati tu alikuwa anabadilika naona he huyu anaweza fanya kitu mbaya. But you know, I already have kids. Mhm. Mm Alafu unajua pia us as camper ladies. 
with Tresha marriage a lot. Again, going back to Makueni, it was difficult. You know, it's something that you think like, I never met here too. Nichunge ndo. Yeah. Kini unapo, sasa, wewe ulivomilia, saizi uko na stroke. Imagine. I wish I knew, but it's all be fine. Yes, you, you're recovering, right? Yeah, I'm recovering well. In summary, what I have gotten is that you have been in marriage. Mm. You have been living in fear. Yeah. And as you wanted to protect it, to protect the marriage, you have ended up being sick. Yeah. Do you love this man? I used to love him so much, but the moment he assaulted me, I feel a lot of bitterness. And I realized nimekuwa nikimpatia that opportunity ya kufanya nikunifanyia vitu mbaya after the first assault mm -hmm. yeah so what have you decided because he refused to come after leo ndio alikuwa akuja at my grandparents home mm -hmm. with his uncles but he, he called yesterday and said that he will not come did he give so a reason he didn't give a reason mm -hmm. but to me it's okay because i didn't want to go back to such a marriage mm -hmm. you know i could end up dying people are dying yeah so what would you what advice would you give to ladies or wives who are in marriages and they're going through assault uh, or emotional abuse I can tell them that was nyamaza iku nyamaza na kukuwa so desperate ndi nafanya wa mama tukufe like me I was to die like kama yoka tell me assault kichwa again and I had already had an injury I was on on my healing ningekufa tu na angesema ni stroke iliniua so kunyamaza ni mbaya you speak out there's so many people outside who wants to help people like me that is what i have re realized mm -hmm. but hiyo kunyamaza inafanya watu waone tu uko sawa unabeba tu na gari unapelekwa hospitali therapy mnarudi nyumbani unajifungia kwa nyumba you're not telling people what you're going through actually most of my friends they can't believe what i'm telling them wananiambia mimi ndio nitangani Mm -hmm. Because we were living a very good life. Me nikitoka nje I'm smiling but when we get into the house it's worse. And you said even out of there he, was he treating you much better in public? No. After the assault and after I got sick now the limping as mm -hmm. we go to the supermarket you could see that he's shying off kutembea na mimi mama kunishikilia. Mm -hmm. Actually there, there is a day after sana nimepata pata nguvu ya kutembea. Mm -hmm. my left leg in a limp sana na nikipanda zile unajua zile ladha za supermarket mm -hmm. ukienda upstairs si stairs zile nyi imeslide imeslide mm -hmm. mm -hmm. lazima nishikiliwe nyuma because i didn't have balance na zarudi nyuma that day he saw some ladies and his problem started with the ladies kuongea sana na simu na wanawake some they can call na sikia tu vile wanasema lakini ukimuuliza anakataa ana deny kabisa na hataki hata umuulize so mm -hmm. yo siku kunishikilia tukipanda stairs akaona wasichana wanafanya kazi na wao aliniachilia actually he, he say i'm not supposed to be thinking mm -hmm. it twist ikaanza kukuwa so painful mm -hmm. so from that day nikajua anaibika kutembea na mimi so uh, sijai toka tena na yes, except going to the to therapy to the hospital sijai toka na yeye tena mm -hmm. yeah so it was in assault after assault after assault yeah so right now there's nothing that you're doing at home no right now i'm just staying mm -hmm. just looking after the kids and my old grandparents mm -hmm. because they also need help mm -hmm. yeah uh, and as we speak as we speak right now that mm -hmm. is the, the reason why he refused to come to talk there is a woman in my house today which house she came in limuru mm -hmm. that i left there is he brought someone in the house they are not even ashamed they are sending me photos really yes and you know the photo can show the date the time why why are they sending you these pictures you know i asked him through a message and then he told me that do you think that after you leave that my life my life will stop so disrespecting nani picha za nini anakutumia za huyo msichana akwa mvalia nguo zangu amekalia kwa my my coach anakunywa chai how do you feel when you send you I felt so this? bad because I have invested a lot in that house for the last 11 years when I was working I even used to buy a house furniture 
na sediana akinunua kitanda next time na mimi nanunua fridge akinunua hii nanunua my house is full but i felt so bad that right now i'm gone with nothing i have the kids the responsibility of the kids it's me and i'll have to know what they eat and you know kambani kuna njaa sana lakini yeye kwa nyumba analeta wanawake wengine he does it kia kwa nyumba yako kwa nyumba yangu You know he knows we were given some reports by the doctor that if I get stressed I might get another stroke and I might die the second stroke just die So he's no he knows what he's doing mm-hmm. Yeah I feel like at this point you also need uh, a counselor Yeah I think it will really help I was going for I was seeing a psychologist but he stopped booking for my appointments mm-hmm. there is a time he, he reached a point that he stopped taking me to therapies mm-hmm. he stopped taking me for physio he stopped taking me for my doctor's appointments now you are recovering on your own in makueni yeah, i'm recovering on my own actually my son is the one who's doing some stretch up on my leg he's only 10 mm-hmm. yeah because if i don't do kumasa jama kuvruta vruta siezi tembea i'm so sorry for what you've gone through thank you and uh, these are the reports the doctors yeah, report the report of the, the stroke you can see that there is a decision on my right this one was in june yeah three three reports ah. and the report of the assault with the fracture on my nose mm-hmm. ali feature i don't have it what are the p3 ali feature do you have any message for him what i can tell him is that just thanking him for what he has been doing to me na kumwambia tu alinikosea sana kunifanyia vitu zaje alinifanyia on my condition in my condition because when i was okay actually if you see the my pictures the way now i am and the way i used to be you can't believe it nilikuwa namsaidia wakati nilikuwa sawa i used to to support him financially nilikuwa nimewaeka vizuri pia hata yeye alikuwa ameniweka vizuri lakini the moment nimekuwa mgonjwa ndio nimekuwa ana ni deny I feel so bad about it hmm. the message for him is that this body that i have it is flesh blood and bones he also has the same body and you don't know about tomorrow yeah it was not my wish for me to be sick i didn't tell god that i should get stroke just came the, like any other disease yeah now if if he came with wazes uh, and your side also sat down would you go back to no, getting I'm not married go back. to being I, married no i had already told my grandfather that i don't want to go to such a marriage mm-hmm. because for once he's assaulting me in front of the kids secondly sometimes he gets so furious and start assaulting the kids my kids have suffered in that house for that one year mm-hmm. since i got sick Yes they have suffered they don't want to see my children suffering. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, then as you were getting into marriage back then what picture did you have of marriage? I was young, I was naive. I didn't know anything about marriage because my mother was a single mother and she left us when we were so young me and my siblings. So I didn't have any any idea of what marriage is. Yeah. You did your best. I just did my best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, this is Tuko family. Mm-hmm. They are watching you. Yeah. What would you ask of them? I'd ask will wishes to help me first recover because I need medications. I take Ascards because of the the session in my head. I need Ascard for to prevent clot because if I get clot again, I might get the stroke back mm-hmm. also need painkillers also need to support my kids to, to get food yes and then to get back to because i'm recovering and i know very soon my hand will stretch my, the, the, the last time i visited the doctor he said that my hand already mm-hmm. has stretched mm-hmm. the fingers are not tight like mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. so there is hope mm-hmm. Yes, that one day my hand will stretch. Mm-hmm. I just want to get back into business mm-hmm. and bring up my children. They cannot and support me and my They cannot be straight. No, they cannot be straight. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 
you can, <laughs> you can go back to business. Yes, I can go back to business mm -hmm. so that I can also keep my body busy. Now you so seems like I also need that to rent alone. because I cannot continue staying back at home. Mm -hmm. You know, the more you you stay, you get comfort. move. My kids need to go back to school January. Mm -hmm. I need to, to 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 move back to town so that I can rent and stay with my children, waiting mm -hmm. for January. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Would you be comfortable giving us your number? It's okay, my number is 0701-780-137. Please repeat. 0701-780-137. Registered under who? Catherine Mwende mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Catherine, okay. uh, for the courage to share your story. Mm -hmm. We can see your condition. Yeah. This is not where we say that one is, is, is not truthful. Yeah. Uh, and we wish you quick recovery. Thank you. And we wish you happiness in life. Thank you. Regardless whether you are on your own or married, we wish you mm -hmm. the very best. Thank you. May God bless you and uh, expand your territories. Amen. Yes, and may he heal you so that you can go back to the industrious kit that you were. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Tuko family, that is the painful story of Catherine Mweni, as she is right now, developed a stroke out of an assault and continuous assault in marriage. In her own words, do not wait to that point. Run for your life. Let's stand with her. She is here, you can see it for yourself. She needs our support. My name is King Wangeshi. This has been my story right here on Tuko. Thank you.